1970 activated 20 million Americans from all walks of life and it's widely credited with launching the modern environmental movement. The passage of the landmark Clean Air, Clean Water, and Endangered Species Acts and many other groundbreaking environmental laws soon followed. More than one billion people now participate in Earth Day activities each year, making it the largest civic observance in the world. The West Bloomfield High School Earth Club was created in 1993 with the mission of promoting environmental awareness and preserving the planet. Earth stands for environmentally aware, ready to help. During its existence, it has involved and empowered hundreds of students in the environmental action. Hello, I'm Superintendent Jerry Hill, and I'm here with Alicia Fly, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction. Today we welcome Josh Barclay, who teaches AP Physics at West Bloomfield High School. Also joining us is West Bloomfield High School senior Juliana Herrera from the West Bloomfield High School Earth Club. Josh has a wealth of experience in his 23 years of teaching both high school and university physics. He has taught a wide range of courses including calculus-based mechanics and electricity and magnetism labs. A conceptual physics course he created for high school juniors at West Bloomfield High School and a physics course geared for elementary school teachers at Eastern Michigan University. That's right, Dr. Hill. Josh is one of our biggest advocates of promoting environmental education in the West Bloomfield School District. As sponsor of the Earth Club at West Bloomfield High School, Josh has led many initiatives, including coordinating the paper and container recycling uh, program. He's aided in the rainforest conservation and through creating environmental education fairs for high school and elementary age students. Also, with a grant from the school district, the Earth Club created a quarter mile long nature trail um, in the Laker nature, nature Preserve. Sounds like he's been a pretty busy man. <laughs> um, Josh, the Earth Club boasts uh, a lot of members, which is a credit to you and your teaching and inspiring awareness of Earth activities at the high school. Uh, would you describe for us some of the efforts uh, made on behalf of the Earth Club and uh, things that you've initiated? Sure. Uh, starting with uh, back in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s, we uh, initiated, with the help of the district, the Laker Nature Preserve, which in which we created a quarter mile long path through the uh, the wood lot behind our school, and we also planted many many native plants, and as well as removing many thousands of invasive species. Uh, the native plants really do a great job to filter the groundwater and filter the runoff from the parking lot, uh, so that uh, since we're right by the headwaters of the Rouge River, that really prevents a lot of pollution from getting in there and uh, improves the water quality overall. Uh, Juliana, tell us about some of the projects that you've been involved with through the Earth Club in, in your years of membership. Uh, we are just now starting a compost for food and organic waste. And we also, just like a few weeks ago, symbolically adopted an Amur Leopard. And through our recycling program, we have recycled over 100 tons of waste. Great. Yeah. Uh, I'd like some of the other students from our Earth Club to share some of their efforts with you as well, and they'll be right with you. Here at the high school, we recycle office paper, magazines, envelopes, notebook paper, newspaper, mail. We do also recycle empty cans, empty glass, empty plastic, and bottles. So we started off our 2014-2015 school year with our first LED light bulb fundraiser and our main goal was not just to um, fundraise money for Earth Club, but to protect and save the environment as well. And LED bulbs are a lot more energy efficient compared to incandescent bulbs. And they, these LED light bulbs use a quarter of the energy um, that incandescent bulbs use and so they don't only save energy but they, they save the earth and money as well. Um, so only one LED light bulb has to be replaced every 23 or so years which is great because you don't have to keep replacing them and replacing them like incandescent bulbs burn out very fast and so you have to continue 
buying them, but with LED light bulbs, you only have to buy them once every 23 or so years. Lily talked about the LED lights. You have a bike generator in your classroom that generates power to light bulbs as well. Would you mind telling us about that? Absolutely. Uh, one of the uh, main ways that I think can educate people about uh, energy efficiency and how important it is to switch to more efficient appliances is by forcing them to power light bulbs themselves. And we, uh, people find that when you try to power incandescent light bulbs, it's nearly impossible to keep those things going for more than 30 seconds to a minute. However, when you switch over to the LED light bulbs, which are about 10 times more efficient, Kids can just keep pedaling and keep pedaling. In fact, uh, power three or four times as many lights and do it for longer uh, using the LEDs. Much more efficient, use less energy, and contribute way less carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. I, I do recall, uh, Mr. Barkley, when we were in your classroom, one of our board members did that experiment. Exactly. And, and he became a believer, in, not in incandescent <laughs> lights, because it, it was hard to light up. So that, that yes. was a very powerful experience for him. And he's Absolutely. an adult. Absolutely. And I find that uh, by actually forcing them to power that, people will walk into a room and just turn on a light and think it's nothing. But when they get on that bike and they have to power it themselves, they realize, wow, I never realized how difficult it was and how much energy it takes just to turn on a single light bulb. Not the case with LEDs, though. It was certainly a powerful lesson for many of us. I was also um, observing that day. We also have the Earth Club, which is also funded um, a weather and, and wind uh, search station at the high school. And what does that do? Well, our purpose for putting in the, uh, the weather and wind uh, research station was to measure specifically the uh, wind speed at West Bloomfield High School, because that was at the point we were trying to research what would be the best renewable energy system to put in. Uh, we found that our wind speed wasn't so great, uh, but uh, solar energy pretty much throughout Michigan is good enough for solar energy. In fact, uh, I personally, at my own home, power all of my electricity with solar energy. Uh, and uh, amazingly enough, even in the month of February, I was able to power all of our electrical appliances with solar. So we've got a great uh, solar resource in Michigan, and uh, we've actually got the 15th best wind resource in the United States as well. Recycling, repurposing, and teaching students to be friends of the earth has been your mission in your career. What kind of responses are you getting from the students uh, in your classes on a day in, day out basis? Uh, the kids are very, very enthusiastic about helping the earth. Uh, the Earth Club is one of our largest service clubs at the high school, and uh, uh, the kids really love getting involved and making a difference. Uh, the uh, uh, Students uh, get really excited about really creating their own projects and we've, you know, this year alone we've come up with 10 or 15 new projects uh, to contribute to our evergreen uh, efforts to become a Michigan Green School. And uh, really my favorite is the, you know, letting the kids leave the club like Juliana. I really try to take a back seat and let them decide what's going to happen day to day. And we certainly do have amazing students in the West Bloomfield School District. Um, one of the things that you're also very responsible for is something that people in our community see every day as they drive by our tennis courts, and that's the solar tracking array. Can you tell us about how that was developed? Absolutely. We have the largest solar tracker in, uh, of any school in Michigan. It's not the largest solar array, but it's the largest one that actually follows the sun as it moves through the sky. Uh, so uh, we got a grant from uh, the Michigan Public Service Commission several years ago uh, that allowed us to, uh, as long, long as we had matching funds, which uh, the Earth Club did a great job in raising, uh, we bought this $40,000 array, which actually generates enough solar power to power an entire home. It's similar, it's a little bit better than the one I have at my home, which uh, uh, actually makes more power than I need, but uh, it's, uh, we created it to actually uh, create interest in people's minds because and one of the reasons we chose to have a tracking array, one that moves, uh, is so people say, wait a second, that wasn't that way when I drove by this morning. So trying to attract a little more attention and uh, create more public awareness of this and how it actually works and works very well in Michigan. Uh, as I mentioned, even in the month of February, I was able to provide my entire home's electrical energy use with only the sun. Uh, in fact, we were net generators in February. We made more energy than we used. And with net metering in Michigan, just like our school is hooked up to net metering, any excess, genera any excess uh, solar generation that we make gets sent to all of our neighbors. So we are actually promoting renewable energy use by all of our neighbors too, and we get 100% retail credit for that. So does the school. 
Great, great. So Mr. Barkley, you are helping people learn how to use less energy. And I know you practice that as uh, what you preach from what you said today in terms of your own personal home. I think your mantra is green your home and save green for your wallet, um, which, which I think is a fabulous response. How'd you come up with that? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's really, it's, uh, it's kind of a no brainer, especially with efficiency. Efficiency is just using uh, uh, machines and devices that just use less energy. And really that is the best source of renewable energy. I call it efficiency renewable energy simply because every, if you put in more efficient appliances, every year that you use them, you're still saving energy. So it's, it's something that you can put into your home and into our schools that saves energy every single year. It is the single most important thing that we can do to preserve our planet and to reduce our energy bills. Rarely do you get a situation where you can do something that's good for the environment and good for your pocketbook. And energy efficiency is a perfect example of that. Uh, I know that uh, Michigan schools spent really more money on energy than they spent on textbooks and computers. So this is a really large area of savings that we can find. And as soon as we put these more efficient appliances in, they will continue saving energy indefinitely. If, uh, efficiency is the most important form of renewable energy that we can get. Well, Mr. Barclay, I know our viewers can tell, but we certainly appreciate the level of awareness that you and your students have brought to our community um, in terms of environmental studies and awareness. Also, um, a wind tur turbine, I understand, um, was donated to the high school. And one of your students um, is planning to help with the installation of that. Can you share a little with us about that? Yes, absolutely. We, were, uh, we had a, an experimental wind turbine donated by the Franklin Wind Energy Group. And we're getting some uh, help from the uh, Michigan Energy Alliance to install it. And uh, it's really, this is one of the first ones they've created, so we actually get to beta test this wind generator. So we're gonna uh, mount it on top of the uh, concession building near the football field, and uh, we actually have a student who's going to design all the electronics to do all the monitoring. So we get uh, students involved as well. He's also involved in the installation. So my name is Brendan Jimby. Uh, I'm doing the wind turbine project at West Bloomfield High School, so uh, we, got a wind turbine um, and I'm design I designed the support structure um, for it and got the parts for that um, and I did all the calculations for um, the uh, like the torques and everything uh, to make sure it wouldn't fall over. Once we finish uh, installing and putting up the support structure uh, I will also be handling the installation of all the electronics um, so I'm doing the uh, data logging for the uh, power output of the wind turbine, so I'm um, doing the whole hardware and software stack for that. We're fortunate to have students with the energy and the expertise to help with projects like this. Uh, they've been taught well, as Mr. Barkley has articulated today. Uh, when we come back, we're going to see how other teachers in the West Bloomfield School District are helping to accelerate the global green economy. Welcome back. West Bloomfield High School has been recognized with green school status. Uh, Juliana, would you mind telling us uh, what green school status is and how you achieve that as a high school? Yeah, um, green schools is a program for to help high schools achieve more environmental like ways. And we have actually achieved evergreen status at our school. And by doing that, we do multiple projects that they either like tell us to do or that students come up with. And we have done many over the years and we require every student in Earth Club to actually complete one. So, yeah. And Juliana, what are some of the projects that you've been involved with? 
Um, last year, actually, we handed out brochures and pamphlets to houses around lakes and rivers, and those were to inform people that live there to not put certain fertilizers and pesticides in their like gardens or grass in order to keep the water clean. Given the number of lakes in our area, that sounds like a very important project. <laughs> yes. <Absolutely. laughs> so, Mr. Barkley, can you share with us just some of the ways that other teachers throughout the district are working with their students and help contribute to sustainability? Absolutely. Uh, our biology uh, department this year is uh, doing a really interesting documentary project that I know we have some footage about. Maybe they can talk about it. We've got a really cool project that we're working on. Uh, it's a docu project where we're sort of giving the kids choice in a lot of environmental documentaries that they get to choose. You know, they get to choose sort of like what, whatever they're into, whether it's uh, deals with uh, energy, uh, agri science, uh, loads of different types of documentaries that we've collected that they get to choose from. Kids will get in groups uh, and they'll watch a documentary, but how we assess them on what they've learned, so to speak, is based on what they do with the information they, they acquire. So the idea is they watch this documentary and then they attempt to get outside of the West Bloomfield bubble and connect with the world as a whole. I mean, as we know, it's like a global economy. The, you know, like everything now is global. Uh, so if they get outside of West Bloomfield and, and contact a director to ask questions, contact a scientist to like learn a little bit more about the topics that are, are, are broached in the, in the documentary is sort of the goal. And uh, them keeping a, uh, a, a blog or a, a, a record of the dialogues that they've had with these uh, people that are involved with the documentary uh, is really sort of what we're looking for. Cool. I know there is another project in the works with one of our English teachers as well. Uh, that's right. Uh, Jen McQuillan has gotten a grant for her Walden and West Bloomfield project in which they're going to create a literature garden. I asked in the fall if we could get grant money for a Walden at West Bloomfield. Um, basically the courtyard is underused in my opinion and I had a vision for a space that would celebrate the heritage of um, great American works like The Great Gatsby, um, like Poe short stories, um, like the transcendentalist um, Walden in Concord, Massachusetts. And so um, I have a great vision. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of work to make it happen, but we've got some great volunteers and a lot of them are my former students who took Honors American Lit with me and are willing to work on this project. So, Mr. Barclay, I know that there was one other initiative that you initiated um, to contribute to the greening of our schools and our homes, and that was the Unplug It campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about that campaign? Absolutely. As I mentioned before, efficiency is one of the most important ways that we can uh, save our environment. Uh, and uh, one thing that I noticed uh, as a teacher at the school, when we leave for breaks, I saw that people were just leaving all of their items on, which is a horrible waste of energy. I mean, it's one thing to use the energy when we're actually using it, but to use the energy when no one's there and it's not being used. So the Earth Club started the Unplug It campaign uh, in which we encourage teachers and help them to unplug all their unused electronic devices so that energy is simply not used at all over the break. Uh, many people don't realize that even when I, your devices are off, they're often using power. And a great mnemonic to remember, if you have an item that uses 20 watts while it's off, that costs you $20 a year. And that's money that simply does not need to be spe uh, spent. To help educate people and let teachers know about this, I actually created a rap video uh, to encourage people to unplug all their devices. Don't be a fool, we gotta keep our planet cool by reducing our use of fossil fuel. Unplug it before you go. Have a low energy school break, you know. Unplug it before you leave, cause if it's on all week it helps nobody. Unplug it before I'm moving on, otherwise you may find your planet gone. Unplug it Friday, 2 p.m. And when we get back from break, plug it in again. Lend a hand, tell a friend to show yes we can. Reduce the rent, cut down on carbon spent. It all starts right here. Turn off the light, shut down a computer. When you go home at night, turn off the monitor. That uses power too. Be aware and we can reduce energy use. Unplug it before you go. Have a low energy vacation, yo. Unplug it. I believe we can make a way huge difference just by chillin'. Unplug it before you gone. When you get back from break, you can turn it back on. Unplug it Friday, 2 
15. We can all help keep our planet green. Unplug it, y'all. Our viewers have the opportunity to be a part of our project powered by West Bloomfield High School uh, students and the Sun by logging on to wirewb.org where they can view the hourly energy production from the solar array for the day. Can you share a little information about that level of involvement? Absolutely. In fact, uh, we have posted on our main page at wirewb.org uh, a couple of videos that show you how you can save energy at your home for no or low cost and literally save yourself thousands of dollars and prevent tens of thousands of pounds of carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere. I should mention that WIRWB stands for West Bloomfield Initiative for Renewable Energy at WBHS. Great. Josh, thank you for all that you do to help teach our students about renewable energy and sustainability. Uh, and thank you, uh, Juliana, for joining us today and all that you do in terms of leadership and in your involvement with the Earth Club. And thank you, audience, for joining us today where we have taken a closer look at why energy conservation is so important to all of us and how our teachers are connecting students to the real world. Mm -hmm.